Hello there, it's Ruth Sherman, CEO and celebrity speech and media coach, but you don't have to be famous to work with me. First, the facts. Hillary Clinton made history as the first woman to win the Iowa caucuses. She won by a razor-thin margin, it's true, which may have been disappointing to her stakeholders, but that's all you ever need to win. Whether you're running for president of the PTA or the USA or going for Olympic gold. So let's give her that at least. Second, unlike a lot of people, it didn't surprise me to see Hillary Clinton do less well than expected in this first contest of the election season. You know, for candidates to, do, uh, to win or to win big, they have to inspire voters through five communication channels. And the first is message. The second is the personal narrative, which is your formation story, your hero journey. Third is presentation, huge. Interpersonal skills is fourth and the spouse is fifth. Yep, your partner or lack thereof. It makes a difference. These don't all need to be nailed down, just the majority. Some like message and presentation hold more weight than others and they don't have to be perfect or even great, just better than your opponent. So you'd think, or I'd think, after 25 years in the public eye, after running for president not once but twice on a scale of 1 to 10, Hillary Clinton would be a 10, at least an 8 or a 9. Instead, she's somewhere around a six, give or take, and that won't be enough to win. So what's going wrong? Well, there are a few things, and we can learn from this. First is her muddled message. What's her slogan? You can't answer that, so you see the problem. Now, truthfully, Sanders doesn't have a good slogan either. In fact, he doesn't have one at all. He has a chant, feel the burn, which I frankly find kind of icky, but I can see where his supporters might like it. And he's testing out a slogan that he's lifted from Obama's last campaign. They all steal uh, stuff from other successful campaigns, by the way, because there are only so many words that will do the trick. But the Obama slogan feels too recent to be stealing it, so we'll see if he sticks with it. Slogans need to be aspirational about the future, which is why Trump's slogan, Make America Great Again, is so great, and Rubio's A New American Century have such power. They have to be easy to remember and have a ring to them when you say them. They have to make you feel good, and those two do. The first thing I saw when I went to Clinton's website after Iowa was, I'm with her. Really? People will only connect with you if your message is aspirational and gives them hope. Second is personal narrative. We haven't heard much about her story, and what we already know we don't necessarily feel inspired by. Now, there is a compelling story in there somewhere. How do I know? Because everyone has one, and no, it doesn't have to be, I was homeless and now I'm running for president. Everyone struggles. We need to hear about hers. By the way, we haven't really heard much about Bernie's struggles either. So, note to Bernie. Whose have we heard? Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio are two great examples. So, go read John Kasich's. They're compelling, and they make these guys more relatable. A compelling personal narrative tells people you lo- you're like them, you get them, you've walked in their shoes in some ways. Finally, presentation. Mostly she screws this up with her voice. Now I want you to look into my eyes. I'm serious about this. Some criticisms out there are sexist. The culture doesn't tolerate what it perceives to be as power displays in women. Never has, probably won't. That's the honest truth. I don't care whether you like it or not. Beyond sexism, however, there is an entirely new generation of voters who have never heard a woman's voice in campaign mode at this level. What they've heard is their mothers yelling at them. Men's voices have been the gold standard by which women's voices have been measured, which is very unfair. Still, she could do better vocally. She makes a classic mistake, and and that is to mistake volume for expression. So instead of using a wide range of pitch like I'm doing in her speaking voice to make us lean in and listen, which she increases her volume, which paradoxically limits her ability to be expressive. And this translates to a lot of people as yelling. We've already got one of those in Sanders, whose voice is very unpleasant to listen to. And don't head over to Cruz's videos for any good examples of vocal expressiveness. His level of expression is so wide, so practiced, and so calculated, it sounds phony. He needs to go run a megachurch or something. Rubio, on the other hand, has this nonverbal code nailed down for the most part. 
definitely listen to him for a sound that's very pleasing and fluent. And I know he's a man, but women's voices can be pleasing and fluent too. Learn from Marco. The final two, interpersonal skills and spouse, will become more important as the campaign progresses and the candidates called. Interpersonally, I think she's pretty good. We'll see. The spouse issue brings up a lot of stuff, a lot of it not necessarily in her favor. And although it would be history making, uh, we all better get ready for the onslaught. In the meantime, here's what you can learn by observing this masterclass in public communication. Number one, get very clear on your message and repeat it until you can't stand it anymore. Then continue repeating it. Develop your personal story and practice telling it so people can discern your core values and philosophy to feel more connected with you. Work on your presentation skills. This is the biggest, most important thing you can do. Becoming a great public communicator, the best marketing spend you can make, will return dividends far beyond your wildest dreams. If you want to learn to become a better public communicator on stage, on camera, or in the press, hop on over to ruthsherman.com and subscribe there so you can download my free gift. And also hit subscribe here. Thanks for watching.